And when we all sing happy tunes and sing Merry Christmas and wish each other Merry Christmas, these children are not going to have a Merry Christmas. How dare we speak Merry Christmas? How dare we? Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas is a time of hope and joy and to celebrate our favorite family traditions. Today, for example, you will be <laughs> cooking your mother's famous chili relleno, and I will be eating your mother's <laughs> famous chili well, relleno. You'll say a mother who pays a coyote to transport her child through their country of origin, through the entire country of Mexico, facing unknown peril to come here. Why would that mother do that? I will tell you. Because she has decided for that child to remain where they are is worse. But what does Donald Trump do? He says, go back to where you came from. That is not reflective of our America and our values, and it's got to end. To be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border, do not come. Do not come. And I believe if you come to our border, you will be turned back. Oh, they did come, Kamala. They came and they weren't turned back. 18 million entered illegally. Well done, border czar. And what a candidate she is, a far-left ideologue who fans the flames of racial division, who raised bail money for BLM thugs, some of whom went on to commit more heinous crimes, including murder, and she wanted to reimagine public safety. Let's talk about America's failure when it comes to understanding how you create safe communities. And by that I mean this. It is outdated, it is wrong-headed thinking to think that the only way you're going to get communities to be safe is to put more police officers on the street. What we have to do, and what we will do, is reimagine public safety. Mr. Jesse Smollett claimed he was the victim of a violent hate crime and blamed it on Trump supporters. Well, that was, of course, later exposed as a hoax. But before all of the facts came out, then Senator Kamala Harris posted, Jesse Smollett is one of the kindest, most gentle human beings I know. I'm praying for his quick recovery. This was an attempted modern day lynching. No one should have to fear for their life because of their sexuality or color of their skin. We must confront this hate. To this day, she has not deleted that post. Now, the retired Chicago chief of detectives who helped expose the Jesse Smollett hoax is issuing a warning to voters. Eugene Roy joins me now. Eugene, good morning to you. So one of the things about becoming a presidential candidate is all of the past things that you've said become relevant once again. You know a whole lot about this Jesse Smollett story. What do you think about that tech, that tweet from Kamala Harris? Burn is a leader in government, whether it's a political office or a career service office, such as the police, is to never make a premature judgment, to never get out in front of the facts, to get out in front of a situation before all the facts are known. Especially when you're in a leadership position where people are hanging and take your word as, as your bond, to make a premature decision like that on a highly uh, emotional and inflamed situation, uh, it, it just, it's not appropriate. Yeah, I think that's really good advice for many members of, of Congress and, and people in government, not just her, but her included. Uh, so that happened in 2019. That's when the Jesse Smollett thing occurred. And then in 2020, of course, it was the Black Lives Matter protests. And during that time, she encouraged her followers to support the Minnesota Freedom Fund, which is a group that bailed out rioters. Some of those rioters even attacked police officers. Fast forward to today, she is now running as the prosecutor presidential candidate. How do you feel about that? When you are in a leadership position, such as the vice president, you are the vice president of all the people, not the vice president of a certain segment of the population. You lead all the people. You should be in a position where you're calling for an end to violence, not uh, promoting bail bond funds to uh, re have people who've engaged in violent anti-social uh, uh, crimes uh, be released back into the community. 
As a former police officer, do you see Kamala Harris as somebody who supports police? She's steadfastly called for uh, defunding the police. Again, the, the thing with the bail bond fund, uh, her rhetoric, her uh, ill-advised comments on the Smollett case um, certainly show where she's at. She has called for reimagining public safety. Uh, we've seen what it has done uh, to cities like San Francisco, and now she is hoping to be the leader of the entire country. Eugene, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. She speaks in, uh, in rhyme. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. But she has bad moments. And in rhyme? What do you well, the way she talks, the bus will go here and then the bus will go there because that's what buses do. And it's weird. The whole thing is weird. This is not a president of the United States future. Who doesn't love a yellow school bus? Right? Can you raise your hand if you love a yellow school bus, right? The bus has Wi Fi and even USB outlets next to every seat. I mean, come on, imagine. You can charge your phone on your way home from work. That's good stuff. She really does love buses, but the Democrats have selected a woman who has long been considered to have among the most far left voting records in the Senate. Something she was asked about a while back and she struggled to give a coherent answer. You're very different in the policies that you've supported in the past. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, I somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. But yeah. <laughs> well, actually, the nonpartisan Gov Track has rated you as the most liberal senator. You supported the Green New Deal. You supported Medicare for all. <laughs> Deer in the headlights there. Don't Californicate our nation.